Well, welcome to Print and Paper. This is a series in the library where we explore different aspects of book production and parts of books and um, play around with making different things. Um, today we have Rachel Lavenda, who's the Rare Books Curator in Special Collections, and she is going to show us how to make a very small but lovely um, commonplace book or mini bullet journal. And we're gonna um, start with that and then everybody will have a chance to work and then we'll um, give it a binding. And then next week we'll be working with Keegan Osinski and Emily Weiner to work on doing some lettering for the book, whatever your preference is, whether you have a quote or an, an initial or just wanna practice alphabets. And then next week we'll also hear from Emily who is the acting curator at the gallery and she will talk to us about the history of the color blue. So welcome and join us and it is all yours, Rachel. Okay, so um, as I said, this is gonna be fun thing. We're not worried about perfection or precision. And again, if you wanna think of it as this is a practice one anyway, to give you the sort of template. So moving forward, you'll have a better idea of what you're doing. Um, if you hadn't noticed already, I do have a dog on my lap right now. He seems pretty chill. Hopefully he will remain that way for the duration. So I'm gonna switch my screen. I'm gonna share it and switch it so you can see what my hands are doing. So what you're really gonna need are, we're actually just gonna need two pieces of paper for what we're doing today. Um, a ruler, a pencil, a needle, and then some type of string. I'm gonna use embroidery floss, but you can use thread. You could use some cord. Um, I think you probably, honestly, if you wanted, you could use like a bit of ribbon and it would all work out in the end. Um, I will, we can, if you want, you can wax your um, thread if you've got a candle hanging out, but if not, don't worry about it. I have one of these sweet tools, which is called a bone folder, which makes it really easy to, um, make creases in paper, but guess what? You can do it with your hands alone and it's fine. And of course, then we're gonna need a cover and you can use wrapping paper. I have some unintentionally thematic wrapping paper that we could use. Um, or if you've got like a bit of card stock lying around, you could use that too. And I might find mine with this one since we are focusing on the color blue today. Um, I wanna quickly just sort of take a look if anyone, um, we're all, have I covered all of the ingredients or the supplies necessary? And I hope everybody has that with them. Just sort of, everyone looks all right. Okay, so moving into it, starting with the paper. We are gonna fold this. Now there's a million ways you can make a little book like this. And we are gonna fold this because we think it's fun and charming um, with a, a sort of old school book folding in mind. So this is how you would do it in like 1599 as opposed to 1999 or indeed 2020, 2021, the year has changed, I know this. So um, we're gonna be folding this in fours, um, which will make sense as we move along and we're gonna do it twice. So the first thing you're gonna do is take your paper and this is just normal printer paper, nothing special. And you're just gonna fold it over once in half. And I always try to just balance it up with my finger in the middle and then starting in the middle and pressing out will often give you more control when you're folding. Years of origami have taught me that. And then the next thing you're gonna do is just flip it around so that the open piece is down at the bottom. And then you're gonna fold it again in half. Okay. So that's just one. And so this in the biz is called a signature or a gathering or possibly a choir. I'm gonna call them a signature probably throughout the day or the hour, not the day. And this is gonna be um, the first eight pages of our little booklet. And then to make the next eight pages, you repeat the process on uh, with page two. So again, you just fold it in half this way Oops, that's not parallel. That, and then however you feel most confident folding it again, position it, fold it down, try to get your edges as nice as possible. And I'll use the bone folder on this one just to demonstrate its wonderful efficacy. And so now we've got 
two uh, signatures, that's going to give us 16 pages. Um, so back in the day, as I said, oh, that's my computer. That's what that is. Um, when you went to get things bound, you would have to know how many, what you wanted your page format to look like, because on the printing press, they would print it like this. And so we're going to sort of take, keep that in mind as we move along to make, to sort of see how this all plays together. We can number the pages. Um, I wanted to give you two options, depending on how you wanted to do this. If you wanna just be very methodical about it, you can number it, but if you're sort of interested in a more sort of bullet journal-y way, you could use shapes um, instead to sort of number the pages. So again, I'm gonna just fold it back up again to show you. Um, so we do wanna be careful. We do wanna think about this when we open it up um, that these are how our pages are gonna work. So in terms of numbering them, this will be our title page. So I'm gonna leave that blank and then I'm gonna take my trusty pencil and I'm gonna open it up just at the bottom here. And this is gonna be page three because this is gonna be one and this is gonna be two. So this will be three. So you could mark it with a three or if you wanna do the, like a little shapes, I'm gonna just do three circles and then later on I can outline them and make them cute with some colors. And then that's gonna be page four. So then this will be page five. So I'm gonna do like a little dice five with circles for myself, but you could do the number five. This will be six, so this will be seven. Ooh, how do I wanna do that? It's getting interesting, but that's seven, those are seven. And then, the, and then what I'm gonna do is just flip it over. And so now I'm gonna go backwards with the even number. So this is gonna be eight. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And this will be six. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then four. And then two. So then if we reopen this sheet, you're gonna see that there's an interesting sequence happening with our numbers. Um, we've got the title page here, so there's nothing there. And then it's page eight. Then we've got four on top and five over here. And if we flip it over, you can see that we have seven, two, six, and three. So this is a little trick that they would use to make sure that you're folding it in the right way. But then also um, it's gonna help us doing some of this formatting that we're gonna to do to sort of prep ourselves for next week for when Keegan helps show us some lettering and bullet journal tricks. So the first thing is we're gonna make a nice little border here, just with pencil, you can do it lightly um, because with Keegan, you're gonna make a nice little initial title page there. So I'm just gonna freehand it, but if you wanna be more precise and take a straight edge and do it, absolutely, this is up to you, it's your book. So I'm gonna try and just, well, that's already a little wobbly, but that's okay. So, so that's the title page? Yeah. And next week, Keegan's going to um, do some nice initial work there. Um, so you can make it really nice, pretty, and, and modern, illuminated, if you will. And so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to find pages two and three. So I think we're going to have to flip over for that. I'll give you a second. I'll make sure everybody has done their border however they so choose. And if you wanna make it squiggly, if you wanna give it some, you know, more shape to it, it's, it's your book, you can do what you wanna do. Okay, then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna find that page three is down here and page two is up here. So for this one, we're gonna add some lines in so that um, when you practice lettering next week with Keegan, you've got some lines to work on for doing like an alphabet. So you are gonna to wanna to grab your trusty ruler or straight edge. And how many did I do on my practice one? Okay, so for this one, what I did is I started up a here and I lined it up as well as I could. And we're gonna draw, I just made a little mark an inch of the way down. And I'm gonna try and line that up on my lines. Otherwise it's just visually upsetting if I don't. So I'm gonna go down about an inch and just do a little dot, down another inch, do a dot, down to the third inch, do a dot, and then down to the fourth inch and do a dot. 
And so we're just going to do those four dots. And then I'm going to go over to the other side and repeat the process so that I have some sort of a connecting line. Um, and so then I'm using the crease as my sort of top straight edge. And then I'm making sure that my line down here is as parallel in, in order to trust my measuring, which I will be honest with you, I don't always trust. But again, we're having fun. This is fun. I think it's fun. So then once you've added one, two, three, four, you are just going to connect the line. And I'm going to connect it to that middle crease um, so that it'll look like it's a, it's a continuous line across the two. So I'm going to do it like that. So it's across. And again, you can do it lightly in pencil because you'll be going over it anyway next time. These are just sort of some lines to help you find your way. I like that I said, oh, don't be a perfectionist about it. And now I'm trying so hard to make them perfect. Okay, so one more at the bottom. There's that. And then I'm gonna flip it over again to go onto page two so that this is the top now. And I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna go an inch down for four. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and then go over to the other side. One, two, three, four, and again, to connect the lines all the way to that middle crease so that if we've done our measuring well, it will be a very pleasing connected line. And if not, it doesn't matter because this is a practice book and we're learning as we go. And maybe it'll be a, a piece about asymmetry. Okay. And then the next, if that was tricky, whew, get ready. So for pages sixes and seven, this is um, a little bullet journal format that we're gonna try to do. We're gonna make um, a little calendar uh, spread that Keegan is going to help make wonderful. And I'm going to hold up this little post-it note that I made as a reference for myself. So this is kind of what we're going to be aiming for in terms of design. We're going to have a line at the top that's going to be um, for the type, for the name of the month. And then we're going to have these two grids on the two pages. And I do have measurements for that too, so that hopefully this will be easy and even. Um, and you're going to want a centimeter side if you've got it, because I found that these pages are roughly five and a half inches. So doing it in centimeters makes it easier. If you don't have a centimeters, that's okay. You can eyeball it too. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be fine. So on page six, you're going to try, this is the part that we're going to do on page six. So that's going to be the, the line for the month and then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in a grid. And it's a four by four grid. So when we look at it on this page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure in about, how much is that? That's the one thing I didn't measure. Okay, I'm going to measure about a centimeter in for a reference point. And then I'm going to measure two and a half centimeters down from the top. So two and a half. I'll make a little dot there. I'm going to go all the way over. I'm going to measure two and a half centimeters down. And two and a half centimeters is roughly an inch. So if you only have inches, it's roughly an inch. You can eyeball an inch. That's sort of what we're going. And I'm just gonna draw a light uh, line there to give me a place to write down um, the month when we're doing the lettering and give us a space to make it nice and pretty. And then from the top again, so I'm gonna try and line that up with the beginning. I'm this time, oh, and I'm gonna go on my centimeter side so that I'm measuring it correctly. I'm gonna go down from the top I'm gonna go down four centimeters and do a dot there. And I'm gonna go back over here and try to line it up as well as I want. And I'm gonna go down 
to four centimeters. And four centimeters, if you've only got inches, is just a little bit over an inch and a half. And then from that, so I'm going to draw a line that connects those two. Again, nice and light. And then from the top of this line, whoops, I'm going to go down eight centimeters as straight as I can. Now I'm wondering how straight this is. Okay. And I picked eight because that's easily divisible. That's the idea. And that is about, if you only have inches, it's a bit more than half an inch from the bottom. But so ideally, you then are gonna make a box from that four centimeter down to the eight centimeter down. So you're gonna have it like that. And then I'm gonna measure from the top of this down again, I'm gonna measure it eight centimeters do a little line down there. And then hopefully this will connect And it does. And then since it's um, an eight by eight, you can then divide that in half. So you would just go four centimeters in. Mine is not eight by eight. Hmm. Good job, me. Like I said, this is not a perfect, so this is where my eight is. So I'm gonna fix that. I see where I went wrong and just use the old eraser. Not worried about it, it's all fine. So we go over, find that four mark, divide it in half. And then you want to divide that in half again. So the two there and the six there. And then do the same thing on the other side. Find mark the two, the four, and the six. Draw those lines. And hopefully you've got something like that where you've got the line at the top and then a nice four by four grid at the bottom. I'm gonna clean up my little error a bit not worried, not upset about it. That, so that's going to be the Monday, or excuse me, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for the month of April. And then we have the more exciting challenge on page six to do a three by five grid to be uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So I am going to just flip this around. So now that I'm on page six, oh no. I just reversed it, didn't I? I did, I did. Okay, we can fix that. So, so sorry. This is the challenge of formatting it out before you do it. All right, so I'm gonna erase that line right there. Okay. And then I'm gonna add two more centimeters on top here on page seven. I knew there was gonna be something, Marianne. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Okay, so I'm gonna add two centimeters on the top there. I'm gonna go over to the third and add two centimeters to the top there. Connect those lines. and then just extend these vertical lines here. And then take my little eraser and it'll be like, this never went wrong. And then on the flip side, you know what to do on page six because you've already done it. If you were actually on page six correctly, 
as opposed to myself who was on page seven. What you'll then wanna do is measure this over. You'll wanna measure over that half, that one centimeter from the crease. So if you were on, so you're gonna to wanna to do it from the crease and then draw your grid that way so that you have this one, two, three, four, five by three grid on page seven. And then for me, fixing my error on page six, I'm again gonna do it from the crease over. So you're gonna, looking at it on the page as a whole, that line is gonna essentially extend straight down from that, from that center crease. So I'm gonna just quickly catch up. So what did I say? From the top. Now my line. And then from the top. And you could still do it that way too, from the top, mark the four and then just add the two centimeters on top four and then from the four go down to eight mark to eight But again, the idea is that each box should be two by two centimeters. Two, two, two. Double it down there. So I don't trust myself. Two, two, two. And then finish it up on this side. Two, two, two. So again, looking at it vertically, you've got the one centimeter from the crease and then the grid builds out from there. And on page six, you've got the line for the month name and the grid of four by four. And then on page seven, you're still a centimeter out from the crease. And this time you've got a three by five. And again, each square is two centimeters by two centimeters. And then the last thing we're gonna add, and then it'll be folding and sewing time, is we wanna connect, we wanted to do something that'll connect this uh, signature to this one. So we haven't numbered this one yet. Um, if you were, when we do it, this is again, so this will be page nine. Or I'll wait, I'll wait till, it's hard to tell, but I'll see. Marianne, give me a thumbs up when you're good for this. I'm ready. Okay, okay. So then with signature two, you can mark it the same way we did before. And I'm gonna use numbers this time. So it's nine, and then that'll be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then I flip it over and it's gonna be 16, 14, 12, and 10. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, um, we're gonna connect nine 
and eight in a way to sort of merge our two um, signatures together. And we're gonna do that with a lovely seascape because we're talking about the color blue. So there are multiple ways to do this. I'm going to line them up like this because what we because one of the things where Keegan's going to show you how to do next week is how to sort of create a gradient of color. And so we're going to just do happy little waves that then will go on to the next page. And then you can add to those waves however you want. I'm going to add a sun here because we're a really good artist. And then I was very happy with my, my little birds flying around. Uh, you could add some fish, but bearing in mind, she's gonna show you how to do the, um, the, the color, the, the gradient effect. So you might not wanna add too much in the ocean. Um, and then the rest of the pages we're gonna leave blank so that you can practice and play with them however you want. But so once you've done that, that's all of our prep work done. We did it so that we can fold this then back up. So we've got our title page ready. And then in the next one, we've got page nine on top. And what we will eventually be doing is um, putting them like this. So you've got page your title page on top and you're gonna put it directly on top of nine. That's how it's gonna go when we get there. Um, so move, putting that aside for a moment, we're then gonna need to figure out our cover options. And so like I said, you could have a piece of paper from a wrapping paper or if you've got cardstock or something and you're gonna want, you've got two options in terms of if you've got something like a piece of paper that's flimsy or something you can do. I did mine about 10 inches long. Um, that's potentially gonna be more than you need, but that's gonna be easier to trim down and you're absolutely gonna have enough. So this is 10 inches long. And then it's just over five and a half inches tall because the book itself is just about five and a half inches. Um, and again, this is to make sure you have that space. If you wanted, you could double it and make a really long one and then this one I did uh, with 19 centimeters um, because what I would do for this is I would fold it in half. And then what you would do is you'd fold it in half again with a little bit over that center crease so that you would have the nice paper on both sides. And then I would just take one of my um, signatures find that center crease and I would take a pencil just a little bit beyond to know that's where I want to do the fold. So you can't really tell, but it's right there. And then I would fold it to make that. So it intentionally has this overlap so that you will not have to worry about, well, what am I going to do with that? And then you've got the color on both sides. And so then again, from the crease, I would unfold that. And then from the crease, put my signature there, draw myself a little reference point, just a little bit after, so not too far after. And then with this lovely flexible paper that I can do that with, just sort of round it out till I got there and then push it down but it will overlap and you can trim this down from there. I just wanted to make sure I had more to play with and not find out that I had less because the crease is right there. And then I'm gonna refold it on that crease that I originally made to make sure everybody's playing ball. So you can see I've got a fair bit of extra there um, and you can trim that down if you don't want it because remember whatever we do, it's gonna be right there. So I am gonna trim that down a little bit. I, you only have to technically do that on one side because it's only gonna be over it on one side. I'm gonna eyeball it because we're free and easy this Friday, having some book fun. 
It's definitely gotten smaller as I went on. And that might have been too much, but so that's how you would do it that way. And then you can see that it is sort of, it's a little bit bigger. So you have a nice little border around it. Um, because we're dealing in blue, I think I'm going to bind it with this nice bit of cardstock I happen to have lying around. And so to do this, we're going to get our straight edge again. Or what we need is we need these things. We're going to want our straight edge again. And then we're going to have the needle and the thread or embroidery cross or whatever you're going to use on deck. If you wanted to wax it, which just sort of gives it a little bit more of a shape. And so if you use something like embroidery floss where there's multiple strands, it's gonna keep it all together. To do that, you get a candle and you don't have to turn it on, turn it on. You don't have to light it or anything like that. <laughs> and you just take your embroidery floss and then you find a, a flat edge on the candle and you just sort of put your finger on it. I'll do it the other way so I actually run some through and then you just pull. And you can do that on both sides. And it just gives you a little bit of a waxy coating that might make the thread a little bit easier to work with. But you by no means have to do that. Um, you can absolutely do this with just normal thread as well. So for this, you're gonna want about 18 inches. That's gonna be absolutely more than you need. But then if you wanna do beads or a special bow or you mess up like some of us do sometimes, I'm pointing at myself. Um, you've got that extra bit there. So first I'm just gonna get that ready. So I am just gonna measure 18 inches. So I've got that ready. And we're not gonna tie a knot at the end. That is part of the process. So you don't have to worry about tying a knot or anything like that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, this is the one moment where precision might actually matter. We're gonna figure out the three spots on the each signature and the cover where we're gonna poke a hole. So you do want this to line up as much as possible. Um, and I think, again, this is awkward because it is five and a half ish inches. Um, so to find the center, my really scientific way is since I know that I'm working in about five and a half inches, I'm just gonna count in every half inch. And I would say you wanna do, you know, this is about a centimeter or a quarter of an inch, I would say in. You don't wanna go that full half an inch. I would say a quarter of an inch is where you're gonna to wanna to do this. So I'm gonna do a little dot there. You can see that that's what about a quarter of an inch looks like, I'll hold it up. That dot there is about where a quarter of an inch is. And then what I'm gonna do with my, like I said, with my flat edge, my straight edge, my ruler, is I'm gonna kind of count back half inches. So I've got one, two, one, two, one, 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 one. And then I'm gonna pick that as my middle spot right there. And then from here, you could do it by quarter of an inches or you could just eyeball it. Just make sure you eyeball it the same way. You're gonna to wanna to go in about half as well or what you could do, I would say go in about an inch. If you roll up your ruler so you've got a, a straight line to an inch, go down about an inch there. And then I would repeat that down at the bottom, find an inch line and then do that. I'll erase that so I don't get confused. And then you want to make sure that your actual place where you're going to hit it with the needle or pin it with the needle is about a quarter is a quarter of an inch in. So that mark I made was too far out, for example. So that you end up with something that looks like that, where you've got, oh, I'll move down a little bit. You've got three holes in there, uh, potential holes. And you're gonna do that the same thing here. You're gonna do the same thing on this one. And you're gonna do the same thing on this one where you're gonna find your center and then you're gonna go an inch down, an inch down and about a quarter of an inch. 
and you can do them next to each other. So you make sure you line it up correctly. You could do that. You could just measure in a half inch or excuse me, a quarter of an inch and use the edge of your signature as your straight line there. And then just sort of use your straight edge and say, okay, that's a quarter of an inch. Is that a quarter of an inch? Yeah, that's a quarter of an inch. Same thing over here. I found that mark, quarter of an inch. Move that a little bit, quarter of an inch. So you've got them in the same spot. And then coming over here, which of course doesn't show up great against this. I'm gonna find a quarter of an inch, line it up, use my signature as my straight edge, quarter of an inch, line it up. quarter of an inch, line it up. And then after I do that, I'm gonna double check it to make sure it all makes sense because again, I made this a little bit bigger. So I might have to change those dots to make sure this is centered. If you've measured it perfectly, so it's a five and a half inch over five and a half inch, you're good just doing flat measuring. I'm gonna just sort of double check that my lines line up, my little, dots line up even if I center this there. And I'm saying I actually was really close. I was a little bit off on one of them. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm going to just take my needle and I'm gonna poke through each one um, so that the holes are pre-made. And then I'm just gonna you know, give it a little whirl to make sure it's properly through. And then I know my needle will have no trouble passing through there. As you can imagine, the goal is that now that we've pre-cut all of these holes, pre-pricked these holes, we then will have the easiest job in the world sewing it up. And if you're saying, thinking, but Rachel, some of these pages are still together, we don't have them fully separate, we will get there. I have not forgotten it. Oh, that one does not want to go through. There we go. First one was so easy and this one just does not want to do it. Well, if you're ahead of me, you can always thread your needle that the next step is sewing. I had a sewing, I a sewing box. That one does not want to go. Use my bone folder as a makeshift thumb uh, thimble. Okay. Last ones. And I will also mention the way we're binding this is pretty loose as well. So if you are a little bit off, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. You should still be able to enjoy the book. It should still all function and work. Okay. So once you've got all of your holes, any that one's off, you're gonna thread your needle. And again, we're not tying a knot at the bottom. So just very nice. And then for the stacking of it, you're gonna open up your cover. And then at the bottom, you want the, the signature that starts with a nine at the bottom. And then you want your title page on top. And then you're gonna close it and try and line it up as well as you can. Using a thicker piece of paper like this was means I have to be a little bit more finicky with making sure everything lines up. And then you're going to start in the middle. No, 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 no. And I'm actually going to just, so I'm going to thread it through that one. And then I'm going to just visually make sure 
they all go through. There we go, there's two. Put that up. There's three. And then I'm gonna go through the middle. So we know those are all gonna fit together and you wanna leave, you know, maybe that much or so out. It's okay. And then it doesn't matter which way we're gonna, you can either go up or down and you're gonna go all the way through on another side. There we go. So you're going to have a nice line like that. And then you're not going to, you're going to bypass that middle one and you're going to do flip it over and do the top side now or the bottom, whichever one you haven't done yet. You're going to go through there. When we were doing our run through yesterday, I kept missing some of the holes. So they weren't fully getting, there was always one falling out, which isn't ideal. You want them all to be connected. There we go. Put that through that hole. Oh, I see. The embroidery floss has gotten a little bit twisted up. I should have waxed it. That's an argument to wax it. But anyway, it's all fine. It looks lovely. So now you've got the long one there. And now you're going to go back through the middle one last time. Sort of retracing your steps. Okay, get that through. And then that's all you need that needle for so you can undo that. And then this is loose enough that you can um, you can tighten or pull things if you realize you want more on one end than the other. I think I actually went through my thread at one point. Okay. So you wanna tighten it up a little bit so it's flat, but doesn't need to be pulling and it's tightened up on both. And then at this point you can uh, tie a bow, tie a knot. If you wanted to put some beads or something along here, you could do that too. I'm going to do a little bow, I think, after I let it untwist itself. We are just about done, which is good because we're just about out of time. So I'm going to tie a little, like I said, I'm going to tie a little bow. I'm going to make sure I have that on the bow. Oh, ouch. <laughs> oh, no. Was it the needle? It's the needle. Yeah, I didn't get out a thimble and the, I'll survive. I had to improvise one. Okay. So I'm going to tie myself a nice little bow. I'm going to trim it down to how I think looks nice. And then the last step we're going to do is we are going to cut those folded over pieces because you remember that they're still folded over in there. Um, so for this one, you want to be really careful and you're going to take your scissors and you sort of want to insert it up like this. Don't cut with your scissors, but then you just sort of pull upwards like that. And you might have to do it a couple times to get the page fully uncut. But because we've been folding it, there is that line there. So you should just be able to pull up like that. I just realized I did not do that under the camera. So I will do the next one under the camera because you have to do it four times. So just sort of pull upwards, make sure you don't hit the camera. 
to get it positioned. Pull upwards. I mean, if you want to trim it, you can trim it. If you want to do it um, uh, flat instead of pulling upwards, you could do that too, where you find that crease. Get that out of there. Get down here and you just pull that way. Also a very valid option. I think whichever one you feel most comfortable and safe doing is the way to do it. And then we've got one more to go. And this is, and this is how books were put together back in, in the you know, 16th, 17th, 18th century, where you would then have someone come in and do cut these pages like this after they bound it. So you, that's how you get that sort of nice deckled edge. So then if we've done this correctly, and I believe that we have, oh, I'm gonna tie that little bow tighter. Wants to come undone. You start off with your title page. I will close my scissors. And then you turn to the next page and we should have our lines for when we practice uh, lettering and doing an alphabet next week. And this turned out better than I thought it would. So I'm very pleased. And then you turn to the next page and it should be blank, but we've got four and five there. And then when you turn to the next page, you've got your uh, layout for a month on six and seven. And then you turn to the next page and you have your glorious seascape suitable for framing. And then the rest of the pages should be blank, but you should find that it goes 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And so you've got, and you can always put as many of these signatures in as you want. If you look online, there's a lot of other different ways to do it, but this is just a nice little, uh, like we are saying, you could use it as a little book for your uh, purse. You could make it a nice little bullet journal. Um, I thought something nice, if you do have a calligraphic hand, you could do a really nice uh, little poem book as a gift to somebody at some point. But that is the long and short of it. If anyone has any questions or something was off, I'm happy to try and troubleshoot. I also would be nice if we could, I'm gonna stop the share, if we could all show them and see how oh, they turn out. So. Ooh, lovely. And Rachel, do you wanna take a screenshot? I do want to take a screenshot. Let me I'll go show off our art. Let me full screen this and then I will take a screenshot if my mouse will do it now. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, it doesn't want me to do it. There we go. I wasn't looking smart when I did it, but it happened. Yeah. Let me do one more. Okay. This time looking at the camera, holding up my book. <laughs> Carla holding <laughs> up. A a straight edge. <laughs> um, and I do see there are some things in the chat. I think it's okay, lots great. of thanks from people. Great. Thank you for a fabulous um, way to spend a lunch hour. I hope everybody enjoyed making their book and I hope we'll see you all next week to practice some modern lettering and learn about the color blue. Thanks for Have coming. Have a good day everybody, happy weekend. Thank you. Bye.